Hitler is Jesus Gonzalez, and he's the co-founder of Bitergia. Can I say it right? That's fine. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I changed the name, the other one was. <laughs> uh, which is a software development analytics company specializing in analytic analyzing of free and open source software projects. He also is a teacher and a researcher at the Universitat Rey Juan Carlos in Spain in the context of Liber Software Research Group. His interests include the study of communities of software development with a focus on quantitative and empirical studies. He enjoys taking photos of the coffee he drinks around the world. Welcome, Jesus. Thank you very much. I'm using this one. Oh, yeah. I'm always doing, I'm always doing this. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? OK, thank you. Uh, well, uh, first of all, thanks for staying here. I'm going to talk a bit about the uh, RAS, but I'm obviously not a RAS developer. Uh, I want to put some context into this before starting talking. Like uh, a few years ago, we started to talk with the Mozilla Foundation about how to uh, put analytics to track uh, the different projects that Mozilla is having. We started to do that during the last uh, autumn, and uh, right now we're working with some people in the community team to uh, basically try to maneuver what's happening in the different communities around uh, Mozilla. One of those is Rust, and uh, like. Uh, Two months ago, it was decided that the, 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 the RAS dashboard goes public. The RAS dashboard is exactly what I'm going to present here today. Uh, and it basically tracks what the people around RAS is doing from certain points of view. So it's not only development, but it's, it's mostly development. The idea is quite simple is, since most of the activity is public, let's track what, uh, what's happening in that public uh, activity uh, data. And let's produce some information with it so that the people interested in the project can know what's happening and can react to what's happening. So that uh, the community is, let's say, more self-aware of what's happening in it. Because when the project is large, usually yes, a few people know what's happening, but the rest maybe don't know. So there are several ideas, and in fact, this is work in progress. And uh, well, I'm going to skip the first part, because it's just uh, talking a bit about me and uh, something else. That's not important. Let's go directly to the dashboard. So first of all, you can, you can see the dashboard live, uh, live if you want. You have the URL there, rast community. And uh, it doesn't run you well on a, on a phone, so uh, try to, to do that with uh, your laptop, if you, if you can, or with a tablet. Um, and the idea is to show information from uh, uh, different data sources. In this case, at the top we have Git, then we have a stack overflow. This is a part of checking uh, what the community is doing around REST. Then we have uh, GitHub issues, GitHub pull requests, and uh, there is some more information from this course as well. Um, each of the information there corresponds to one uh, data source if you look by rows. If you look by columns, on the uh, first one you have some uh, simple metrics summarizing. On the next, you have uh, some metrics summarizing activity, like number of commits or number of uh, pull requests or thing, stuff like that. And on the other one, you have people. So we have a uh, number of people following commits, a number of people submitting issues, or, or stuff like that. Here you have a, lot, a, a very rough uh, uh, um, try to have affiliation for people. Uh, it's not really also any bad report I will be telling you later how you can submit it, because many people are probably not well affiliated yet. But the idea is to uh, show how many people are working for Mozilla, how many people are working for our companies, and how many people are working as independent in the, in the community. And you can uh, filter by time. If you go there on the top right, there is time. By default, it's like uh, two years, I guess. But you can focus on the latest activity, like the three months. And uh, you can select uh, any period of time and so on. Everything is at your neighbor. So you can pick almost everything. You can resize things. You can move uh, a chart uh, and stuff like that. And you can serve. If you go then after doing any kind of filtering or something, you can go to the top right and uh, and, uh, and and so. And uh, I'm going to, to go to the real thing. Uh, my connection is a bit messy, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this well. But well, and the render is okay. Sort of. Um, let's see a bit uh, about Git. So uh, you have that menu on the top, where you have the different data sources. And for each data source, you have um, a repository, sorry, a panel, and in some cases, you have more than one. Uh, as I said, everything is at enable, so you can click and filter. So, for instance, this is a total activity for uh, um, for us. And by the way, you can notice how this chart is different from the one in the main page. That's because uh, of lots. 
If you remove the filter bots, you can see how the, the activity in the last time is a bit higher. And I also have to say that this is tracking the activity in the world repository, which means that those commits that didn't make it to the repository yet are not there, but maybe they are having a date from the, let's say, the past, because we are, trying, we are tracking alpha time. So that's mean that, that if, if the commit was then, like, I don't know, one month ago, and maybe it's going to land in the repository next month, it's still not there. So that's why this trend at the end of the, um, of the, of the chart is, uh, well, usual. In any case, you can track, uh, as I said, people like company. For instance, if you are interested in who of those are working for Mozilla, you can just add the filter, and now you are seeing activity by people uh, by Mozilla. If, uh, as I said, uh, assuming that the data we have is, is correct. You may notice those filters over there, the, the um, red and, and green boxes. You can click on them, and if you look, I'm not going to enter into the details, but you can see how you can activate them, negate them, and stuff like that. So that, for instance, you can see uh, how the people not working for Mozilla are performing in the different data sources. You can as well go down and see more information like the number, uh, the name of the people and their contributions, uh, the organization, number of organizations over time, and you can also go and check the different repositories that you have. And you can, for instance, filter for one of those. So I'm going to filter in the last repository, and this is now the main activity for the last repository. By the way, this is the time zones of the people working in this repository. So basically, this is California and the East Coast, and the West Coast in the States. This is the East Coast and South America. This is Europe and Africa. This is Asia, and this is um, uh, Australia and, and so on. This. Um, the most interesting information from my point of view is from the uh, GitHub staff, where you have how you're performing and, th and doing things like uh, getting um, uh, bug reports and stuff like that. The, the, we don't have a separate analysis for the different kinds of issues yet, but for now you can see how uh, the number of issues are coming over time and the different colors are related to whether they are still open or already closed. So you can very easily come here and see, uh, sorry. In this case, let's say closed is, uh, is a pink one, so, uh, well, that screen is when there is pink. So you can see the number of banks that you still have closed from the past, and you can see how many people are submitting banks over time. Again, you can um, click on many, th on many things like uh, filtering by repository and stuff like that, and maybe most important, you can come here and see who is submitting back issues by um, um, affiliation, by, by, by the company. Uh, you can, again, look at the number of, uh, at, the name of uh, at the names of the people doing that. If you're interested in performance, how are you really uh, dealing with closing tickets, uh, some metrics are very important, like how long does it take to close 50% of the tickets, for instance. And you can see that in the issues timing. Here you have, again, all the repositories, but on the, on the bottom part, you start to have some uh, information about how long does it take to close the tickets submitted by this person, for instance. These are days. So you can see for some of them it's 100 and something days, for some of them are 20 days and so on. And uh, probably the most interesting one, well, of course, you can also go directly to the tickets. Those are the, the latest, and those are the earliest. So for instance, this ticket here has been sitting, has been sitting in the repository for about uh, 1,700 years, 1,700 days, like a couple of years. And uh, well, you can look at them, and uh, it's also an easy way of going there and see why this ticket is still open. So maybe there's a reason for that ticket to be open, or maybe you can uh, somehow assign it to somebody and close it or, or something. And on the right, you look, um, you can see some charts related to, uh, as I said, the median time in a closing bag. So this is how long does it take to close 50% of the bags? And the dex, uh, the way axis is in days, so you can see that you have spikes of around 150 days, but right now it's much closer. That's the day when the, oh sorry, that's the month when the bag was reported or when the issue was opened. So that means that for all the uh, tickets, um, 
the tiniest, smaller debt from certain periods in the history. This is the same for 80%. I mean, 80% you are saturating. That means that uh, while well, a ticket cannot be uh, uh, cannot um, be sitting in the repository for longer than the time since it was opened. So that means for 80% of the tickets, most of them, are, I mean, the remaining 20% are still there. So for all the months, you have probably more than 20% of the tickets are still open. That's why you have this sharp line over there. And again, you have some mirrors, and you should open some clothes. And you can, by the way, uh, filter maybe, for instance, only for uh, open tickets, which is usually the most interesting view, because close is close. But you can see the same uh, data for those tickets that are still uh, alive. And you can see well, that how in that case, you are still separating to in the creation in the, um, sorry, in the, in the live tickets. You can see the same for two requests. I'm not going to enter into details, just to show you uh, the general information, which is quite similar to tickets. But when you're talking about two requests, you can also see the timings. And the timings is basically the time from the moment somebody submits a bat to the moment submits, uh, somebody gets the information, uh, sorry, gets uh, the parts landed in, uh, in Git. So that's a very interesting metric when you are trying to attract developers, because if they are submitting data, uh, submitting code, and the code is taking too long to be accepted, usually uh, they give up. This is the backlog. The backlog is basically the stuff that still needs to be done, so the things that are alive, from the point of view of uh, issues and from the point of view of pull requests. So again, you can see some numbers, like uh, how many times you are dealing with this, uh, with this, and this is the structure by time of, um, in this case, issues. So these are open, um, sorry, issues still open by time. So this is, for instance, uh, 2015. So um, for the whole uh, last two years history, there were a certain number around 30 to, five to 50 issues open. The issue of two requests were different. So this is the, the, the backlog, and uh, here you can see the comparison because in pink you have issues, and in green you have full records. And you can see now for green records, most of them are already closed. So you only have some uh, uh, green spots in some parts. You can filter there and see exactly the structure of the two records. And you can see how it is much better than for issues. So that means that you have some two records which are very recent. Most of them around this time are closed. And you have some of them that are still ancient, like two years old. But just a little of them. So the, the structure of how people are closing pull records or dealing with pull records and dealing with issues is very different in this story. And uh, another interesting view is, um, as I said, the stack overflow. Because the stack overflow talks about the outreach of the project. So how many people are asking about this project? It's a very good indicator, in general, of how many people are interested in this project from a, from a development point of view. And the trend here is um, also I would say, interesting. If you look at only at, at questions, which is just by filtering here, you can notice how well, the tension was going up during the 2015, at the beginning, went down, and in the beginning of 2016, and then it's going up again, maybe a bit slower, but more consistently. So this trend is basically, well, this trend is probably very likely uh, correlated to the interest of the developer community in the language. Uh, at least from the point of view of when they are willing to um, make questions and so on. Of course, with time, there are more questions answered, so you have also to discount that. So in many cases, you have not questions because people already have the answers in the circle of flow. And with respect to this course, well, you can see basically a structure of how discussions are happening. Since uh, our discussed forums were uh, started to be used to, uh, not that long ago, you have this very quick trending. So this is very quick uh, uptrend. Um, still, it's difficult to know whether this is really a trend or this is just because people are starting to use uh, the, the, the forums now. You have, of course, again, the specific threads and who is talking in those threads and, and all of that. And um, with respect to the dashboard, I guess this is also going to skip a bunch of uh, slides, which basically we're dealing with all of this. And very briefly, I'm going to talk about the software doing this. All of this is, of course, free software. And uh, the architecture is quite simple and gives a lot of, of opportunities for developers to come and script and get data. Um, 
We basically go to open stories with a tool called Percival, get all the information from it, and store it in Elasticsearch. Then we use Grimoire basically to produce the Kibana indexes, because the product that we are using for the dashboard is Kibana. And now we visualize everything with Kibana. Those indexes that Kibana uses can be also queried with a, a language, with Python, for instance. And that means that it's very simple to get scripts to do uh, specific things on the data and get out uh, interesting metrics that maybe you are interested. Or things like my activity in the, uh, the repository of a client, or which are my uh, uh, layers' uh, contributions or whatever. So um, the, there is a manual for using the uh, Grimoire Lab, and uh, the, the people living with this in Mozilla, which is basically Henry, uh, is very interested in finding some people who could be interested in looking at metrics and providing any kind of, any kind of, of input, or um, trying to learn how to extract information from the database and so on. It's very easy. So for instance, uh, well, these are the tools. Uh, for instance, the, well, sorry, this is the tools. These are the backend supported. And uh, this is a very simple Python code, which is given the activity number of commits, uh, removing merge commits, from a certain date by quarter. So uh, you can see that it's, it's not rocket science. It's just getting a couple of um, queries. And this is a standard elastic search. So there's nothing uh, specific for our tools. The main lesson here is that there's a lot of data in the database with what the uh, REST developers are doing. If you're interested in getting any kind of uh, idea about what's happening or try to find reasons for things, it's very easy to go there and look for the data. Uh, and this may have usually, uh, or may lead, usually, um, hopefully, to more interesting discussions because you can discuss on data and not on, on, on opinion. And just to finish, you can also check how many if you want, which is basically the same staff, but for analyzing any uh, GitHub organization. So if you want, just a media organization there, it's free, and you get a free dashboard with all uh, the organization, Ma more simple than the one for rest, but usually interesting enough for giving it a try. So it's just calgon.io. And uh, enjoy. Um, the idea is go visit there. If you have any kind of comment, back report, suggestion, whatever, we're happy to get it in, in the participation metrics or uh, repository for GitHub for Mozilla. And if you want to learn more about Kimor Lab, Kimor Kimor Lab .kimor or you have also an entry to our to a nice training manual where you can learn about the thing. And uh, that's it from my point of view. So um, any question or comment or anything? Uh, do you need the mic or? Okay, please. Um, can you say a bit more about how you do the um, certain things with organizations? Um, yeah. Basically, um, the, the question is about how we link our persons to organizations, right? Uh, we do it in two steps. First of all, we try to find all the identities for the same person, which basically means uh, trying to match email addresses and uh, all identifiers, GitHub identifiers, and stuff like that. And then we try to affiliate them. For affiliating them, we have like uh, some heuristics, like using the email, uh, email address. If you have a Mozilla email address, probably you are working for Mozilla, for instance. And then we can do it manually, too. Uh, there's a file where basically you find, uh, you, you try to define for it every person the different periods of affiliation to them. This file is going to be saved with the community so that the community can also update it, but that's not.